Like some large insect or monstrous crustacean, the creature rises from the still pool, its pincer-like claw snapping angrily as torchlight reflects off of its mottled armored carapace. Its small dark eyes fix you with a hungry stare and the tentacles dripping from its mouth squirm excitedly as it emerges from the water. Today we're talking about the Chul, which is an interesting creature because unlike most of the monsters that I cover, this one is actually fairly new. This guy did not exist in neither 1st nor 2nd edition. So now let's go ahead and first check out what they tell us about this monster in the monster manual. Survivors of the ancient Aboleth Empire, Chuls are crustaceans the Aboleths modified and endowed with sentience. They follow the ingrained directives of their creators as they have done since the dawn of time. It is interesting that according to 5th edition, these creatures have been existing for a very long time. And you will see why later I find that interesting, though it's good to remember. It says here that in the primeval ages, Aboleths ruled a vast empire that spanned the oceans of the world. In those days, the Aboleths used mighty magic and bent the minds of the nascent creatures of the mortal realm. However, they were bound to the water and could not enforce their will beyond it without servants. Therefore, they created the Chuls. Perfectly obedient, the Chuls collected sentient creatures and magic at the Aboleth's command. Chuls were designed to endure the ages of the world, growing in size and strength as the eons passed. When the Aboleth's empire crumbled with the rise of the gods, the Chuls were cast adrift. Down here we're told that Chuls can sense magic at a distance. This sense couples with an innate drive that leads them to slay explorers, take their gear, and buried it in secret locales the Aboleths dictated eons ago. And then lastly it says that although the Aboleths' ancient empire fell long ago, the psychic bonds between them and their created servants remain intact. Chuls that come into contact with Aboleths immediately assume their old roles. Such Chuls redirect their compulsions to the service of the Aboleths' sinister purposes. The stat sheet here shows them to be fairly powerful with great vigor and great strength, but low intelligence and charisma, but we'll talk about that more later. Good perception too here, it seems they have an immunity to poison, though they don't tell us why that is, it's kind of weird. Uh, dark vision, which makes sense for an underwater creature, cannot speak, but understands deep speech. Here we can see its ability to sense magic, which allowed them to find magic for the Avalets, and then their attacks. Nothing too interesting here, other than the fact that their tentacles can paralyze. Unfortunately, we don't get any lore about their tentacles in here, their special uses or anything, it's just the fact that they got them. But that's it, that's the monster manual entry for the Chul. Uh, fairly standard, nothing too wild in here, as always. Tons of stuff that was left out, but that's why we're here. Let's go and see what the 5th edition monster manual did not tell you about the Chuls. So first of all, it is important to note that Chuls are highly morphic and extremely sensitive to magic. See, these creatures were created, basically sort of manufactured, using magic. Certainly the opposite of what you would consider to be natural, which is why they are considered an aberration, especially since the manufacturer had an aberratic mind. This means that Chuls can change a lot, especially if a mad wizard were to attempt to play around with them a little bit. Because of this, you will probably see a large discrepancy between Chuls between zones and worlds. Some might behave in a certain way and look one way, and then others might behave and look differently. That being said, let's go ahead and describe the monster, which is hilariously something that the monster manual typically does not. When you look at the Chuls, you might believe that it is basically a lobster. What you might miss is that in actuality it is a combination of a crustacean and an insect. And a serpent! See, the outer shell and the claws are the crustacean part, obviously, but then the rear legs and the exoskeleton being the mark of a gigantic insect. See, the original monster was that, a simple crustacean slash insect. This original creature did not have the tentacles in the mouth and could not paralyze its enemies. It was also as dumb as a rock. But then came a different creature, a snake-like aberration that hunted its prey by paralyzing them, then burrowing into their brain and slowly feeding as it controlled its victim's body like a puppet. Through one way or another, those two creatures were fused together in a form of symbiotic relationship. What started 
once as a parasitic relationship eventually turned into a symbiotic one as magic fused them together permanently. The actual lore that describes who did this fusing is unclear. The 5th edition Monster Manual says that it was the Abolith, but older lore from 3rd edition says that it was a mad wizard. In any case, nowadays, if you kill a chul and you forcibly remove the outer shell, you would actually see that inside of the shell there is a tentacled serpent fused to the body acting like the brain of the creature. At that point, the chul would look more to you like a tentacled serpent fused with the hindquarters of a giant water bug. Basically, this monster is not natural at all and an abomination of magic. It was, however, the fusing that granted the creature its paralyzing tentacles and relatively high intelligence. In the 5th edition monster manual, the monster is portrayed as having low intellect, but those might just be a particular variation of Chul that was dumbed down by Abolets so that they could control them better. In 3rd and 4th edition and other lore, the Chuls are actually supposed to be fairly intelligent, at least on average as intelligent as a human and even possess the ability to speak common. Anyways, for those of you who might think it's silly to add a description of a creature when you can just have a picture, this I would say is a good example of why descriptions are great. You can never judge a book by its cover, especially when that book is an aberration. For those of you who are wondering how could Chuls even remember the Abolithic Empire and who their masters really were, you might be surprised to know because the Monster Manual didn't tell you that the Chuls actually have what we call a racial memory. Basically, a Chul baby can recall events that happened to their parents. Memories are actually transferred from parent to child. These memories start off strong with a baby being able to recall their parents' life very clearly, but the farther you go up in your ancestors' memories, they clouder and clouder those memories become. And this is somewhat similar to what Avalets have, except that the Avalets' ancestral memory is permanent and perfect. They recall everything to perfection. But yeah, this is why a chul can create a cluster of eggs and then leave them there to hatch on their own. Those babies will come out already knowing how to fend for themselves, how to eat, and what to do. Though that is something that they don't typically do. <laughs> they are very protective of their eggs. Quote, Jewels hatch from clusters of slimy yellow-green eggs. Adults lay egg sacs only rarely, so they viciously protect them. They are also intelligent enough to understand the value in protecting the egg sacs of other chules in their pod. In environments that offer little food, adult chules collect humanoid prisoners to feed to hatchlings. Chules have been known to attack egg sacs to undersides of ships and rafts to spread their race to new lands." End quote. Because of their aberrant origins, much like with other powerful aberrations, Chuls actually have the potential for psionic slash psychic powers. Much like how Beholders, Mind Flayers, and Avalets can produce mind attacks, Chuls also have the potential to acquire these abilities, though they seldom do. The potential is there, but it typically is never achieved. This potential is seen as psychic static that Chuls produce naturally during their day to day life. And it is this psychic potential and their highly morphic nature that incentivizes crazy mages to play around with chules in hopes of activating this energy. And this is very likely what the Avalets did in order to give the chules the ability to sense magic around them. Just like that, more abilities could be unlocked if given the right prodding. Now in the 5th edition entry, we were told that the chules, quote, were designed to endure the ages of the world, growing in size and strength as the eons passed, end quote. That's a big statement, by the way, and it is curious that we didn't get anything else about that. I can tell you that I haven't found any indicator that leads me to believe that Chules can die of old age, and in fact, that quote from the 5th edition Monster Manual is also reiterated in a similar way in old lore, which leads us to believe that provided that a Chul is not killed, it'll probably just keep on growing and getting stronger. What we do know is that if the Chul grows old enough, the psychic static that they naturally produce eventually evolves into a form of aura that gives psychic vulnerabilities to their enemies around them, almost as if they enhance psychic damage by just being there. These chules can grow from simply being large creatures to being considered huge creatures, and they can become so big and so powerful to be considered as dangerous as some dragons. Of course, it might take eons for them to grow that big, but there are probably some out there. Now, before I end this short video, a really interesting factoid that you might enjoy is that ceramorphosis, which is when a mind flayer injects a tadpole into a creature in order to turn that creature into a mind flayer, 
does not actually work on a chul. Presumably this is because the serpent aberration that lives on the brain of the chul is already a parasitic-like entity with perfect control over the brain. When seromorphosis is attempted on a chul, the tadpole ends up dying but not before the transformation is partially started. The end result is what mind flayers call an uculon or uchulon. This creature is a physically frailer version of the chul that constantly secretes the paralyzing agent of its tentacles, but all over its body. Pretty interesting stuff. You will also be delighted to know that even though chuls are generally immune to poisons thanks to their unnatural bodies, the one poison that actually affects them are brains, ironically. Brains are poisonous to chuls, and it is the only part of a humanoid body that they will not eat. Instead, intelligent pots of chuls will save brains and trade them with mind flayers. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to make some quicker videos for the beginning of this month, uh, but the next video should be uh, substantially longer. Uh, might be another 25-30 minute video. We'll see how, how long it ends up becoming, but I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, but yeah, that, I've got nothing else to say. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being here. I would like to personally thank my Patreon supporters, Psych Bowel, Ricardo Fan, Barry Mascant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Morgan Johnson, Rusty Rain, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, Terry Culp, The Great Codini, Walker Motley, Omega Scales, Karathas the Bulwark, Xeran King, Ozol, Ariel Nelson, Alex Cookson, Griffin Pierce, Falky951, Benjamin Bosters, Mr. Salty, Thomas Hunt, Drayden, Tesla Coil, the Role Playing Junkies Podcast, Prince Daylight Morning Crown, Sabine Kurshap, Solorensis, Ordoric, Williams Ladin, Bushido Burrito, AG Dare, Items to Astound on DMs Guild, Soulless Rider, Lost Crusader, Role Play with Advantage, Stalia, Samuel King, Jacob Ortiz, Tython, Sean Duthat, Treb909, Garrett Minnick, and JD Green for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you'd like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash Mr. Rex to support. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.